Welcome to the Estate Professionals Mastermind Podcast. This community is about providing value first, and rather than having one interaction, one transaction, and one payday from the work you do, we're here to teach you to build so much more. Welcome to the Probate Mastery Alumni Call. We do this live stream every Tuesday at 12 noon here Pacific Time, 3 p.m. Eastern Time, and then put on to YouTube and to other social media platforms. And more importantly, it's on the website, probatemastery.com. And it's kind of edited there. And there's a, a wealth of information there for free. There's more for free than anybody else gives away. And you should take advantage of it before you start paying for stuff, especially when you're starting out your business. Feel free to check out the free content. Feel free to come on here and participate. This is meant to be participative. I'm Bill Gross, and I'm not a full-time coach. I'm a full-time practitioner in probate real estate. I'm based in Los Angeles, California. I have a national team of agents that we're building out a national platform. But I do this every day. I talk to petitioners and attorneys every single day and agents on my team and try to help them do better. I missed a few weeks in the past, but I'm back in business, guys. So, so thank you for, for inviting me back. Welcome me back to the call. I appreciate it. And so, again, it's meant to be participative. If you have questions, put it in the chat box. If you put a cue in front of the question, I'm more likely to catch it. I'll do my best. Feel free to put in the chat box your name, contact info, and where you do business. And if you're a realtor or an investor, and that way we can do some networking while we do this at the same time. It's obviously more valuable if we can get a referral here or there. I want to share two thoughts before we get started, to kind of give you a flavor of kind of where I'm at in this business. Number one, why do I do this? I love this. I love talking to agents about how to be better at solving probate problems. I just did another mastermind, started at 11 o'clock. So the prior hour, I did it for about 50 minutes with a smaller group, but guys I've met with several other times, high volume agents who do probate as well. And, and so he asked me, why do you do this? And I said, you know, I have to think about it because I love it. Because I believe that if you focus on helping people, you'll enjoy what you're doing and you'll make more money than you know what to do with. My first coach was Zig Ziglar. And he said, you can have anything you want in life if you help enough other people get what they want. And I actually coached with Zig in person in Dallas, Texas a while ago for a week. It was an amazing experience. And he lived that. And I would just say that if you can find something you love to do, not all the time, I'll be honest with you, out of 40 hour work week, there are some hours I just want to kill. But for the most part, I love what I do. I love helping people and I love being in conversation about probate in particular, learning the details and sharing those details. So if you're not loving what you're doing, look, nobody loves it when you're struggling financially. That's the hard part is to get off of that. But if you're not loving what you're doing and you are making money, try to figure out how can you do what you love more of. And I believe that that will help you be the key to being better at it as well as enjoying it more and making more money in the long run. The second thing I want to say is that people talk about the time that we're in, the season of the business, where the market's headed. I don't predict the future. I have a crystal ball over my shoulder there. You'll see the crystal ball kind of behind the subscribe button. I, I, it doesn't work. I got one just as a joke, but I don't predict things. I try, it's a reminder for me that I'm going to deal with the, play with the cards I'm dealt right now. And we're all dealt with the cards we have today. Today, rates are in the sevens. Today, people are dying and have probates. Today, whatever's true in your market. And I really focus on dealing with the cards I have today, not predicting the future. But that said, in my career since 1986 in real estate, it gets harder all the time. I think that's the nature of all businesses. I'll give you an example. One of the greatest books ever written on business was In Search of Excellence. It was by a McKinsey consultant. Famous book. They took 50 of the best companies in America and studied them. I had worked for one at the time. And what made them great? And one of the things that made them great, they used McDonald's as an example in those days great in terms of success and finances and such. In those days, McDonald's only focused on a few products. They had hamburger, cheeseburger, Big Mac, fries, malts, fish sandwiches. They had like 10 products. And in those days, that was what they made them great. Well, guess what? I don't eat at McDonald's because I keep kosher, but I know the menu is like ginormous. When you drive by, you can see. Because all businesses get more competitive all the time. And so I think in real estate, if you look at it as, ugh, it's gotten harder because rates went up. It's gotten harder because the total sales are down. You're going to talk yourself right out of the business. You're going to talk yourself into all kinds of bad things. You know, don't worry about the market getting harder. Work about, worry about you getting better. The purpose of this call is to help you get better as a real estate agent, I believe, by learning about probate real estate, learning how to solve problems. And I think also maybe raising the bar in your expectations, that our expectations should be. There's always problems. We as realtors get paid to solve problems. The money we receive. There's reflection of the problems we've solved for our clients. 
And I, I guess there's another way to look at business. I guess some real estate agents, it's like a beauty pageant from where I sit. Customer calls up, their house is perfect. They interview five agents. They all come in one prettier than the next with fancier marketing material. That's not my business. I want to work with, hey, Bill, I need your help. Can you help me with this problem? That's what gets me excited. That's why I enjoy what I do. And I have to tell you, in the last three years, I've made more money than I ever have in this business by far. I invite you to play the game with me. I invite you to enjoy what you're doing. I invite you to create value for your customers along with all of us on this call every week. That's the goal of the call. Okay, so question. First up is from TJ Cannon. And TJ says, timeshares, do we know anyone who I can refer to in Florida and South Carolina? TJ, what kind of situation are you looking for a sales person to sell a timeshare? Are you looking for somebody who can help liquidate a timeshare, get out of it? What are you looking for regarding timeshares? Hi, Bill. Saying? This is Meredith. I'm on TJ Cannon, my husband. The, the client I was talking to today has timeshares that they have in Florida, Fort Lauderdale, and South Carolina. And that's her biggest issue. She doesn't know how to get rid of them. In a probate case or just in general? Yeah, probate. Whew. And what state's the probate being handled in? It's in Michigan. So first thing, obviously, you might want to talk to an attorney about what the options are. In California, you can either sell the property during probate or you can close the probate and transfer the ownership. The problem is in other states, you know, I can't speak to Michigan, but in California, you can't change the ownership in Florida from California. So what would happen is you set up a subsidiary probate in Florida and another one in South Carolina, Ooh, okay. assuming the title's held in the real property. The timeshares often are held more like stock certificates yeah. or limited partnerships, which are not jurisdiction dependent but like a stock, you would change names. Okay. It's also possible when they did the timeshare in that format, they named a beneficiary. So I would check and see, oftentimes customers use the same timeshare company, like Marriott for multiple locations. So it might be the same company. Okay. And I would check and see when they bought it, did they name a designated beneficiary? And if not, how do they hold title? And generally they don't own the real estate. The, the title is Marriott Timeshare Corp. And you own shares in that and just like stock, through probate, you can change shares of stock if it's not real property. And I think technically, I believe a timeshare tech in California, I believe technically is not real property. I can't speak for Michigan though. Okay. Are you a real estate agent or are you an investor? I'm a real estate agent. And quick pitch, where, what city are you in? We are out of Granville, Michigan. Grand, Granville. And what school is in Granville? There's a big college there, no? There is Aquinas College. There's Grand Valley. Grand Valley. Oh, Grand Valley yep. State. Grand Valley, I think yep. it is. Grand Valley State. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I think they play basketball. I think they played. I went to a game with a local college. So Grand Valley. And do you do play it regularly? Is this new for you or is this something you've been doing for a while? I've been doing it for about a year and a half. Uh-huh. And just getting over my probate hesitant to make the phone calls. <laughs> it's well, been a struggle for me. Well, I, so in your case, I would definitely go back to the customer. Is there a beneficiary? How they hold title? But you want, this is also a good excuse to talk to an attorney that you might have a relationship with. Okay. So generally speaking, I wouldn't call an attorney who doesn't specialize in probate, but in this case, you might have an attorney that you've done business with. You know, they do contracts, they do family law, there's a little bit of a bleed over, and they might be able to answer the question for you. They might know or have some experience. The other thing is I, I'm Los Angeles, and I belong to the LA Bar as an affiliate membership, just like in your board of realtors, you might have affiliate members like mortgage people, escrow, because they want to be in your organization. I'm in the Bar Association as an affiliate. Our affiliate has like a chat thing where people ask quite attorneys ask each other questions and answers all day long amazingly informative oh. um, and so you might want to look at your michigan state bar and see if they have that in a place where you can ask questions maybe it's a facebook group or something oh, else yeah, but, that's a great idea and i'm saying this for everybody i think all, all of us as professionals you might want to find a way to join your local bar and then if there's a, a, a method that you can ask those kind of questions to okay thank you for that are they doing a so are they doing a probate is there other resources other assets besides the timeshare? Do they have a house they have to sell? Or? Nope, no property. That's why she was very hesitant about yeah. the timeshare. She was like, that's yeah. my biggest stressor. And, and it, they don't have any other stocks or bonds or other amounts? Because mm -hmm. in, in most states, there's a dollar amount that if the value exceeds, that triggers a probate less than you don't. Like in California, it's 167 or something where you just do an affidavit to change the asset. So the timeshare, as you sell it, of course, it's worth a certain amount of money and that might just be an affidavit rather than a regular probate. Okay. 
Thank you for your time. Sure. Good luck. Thank you so much. Thanks. Meredith. Let's see. Good. We got a bunch of people with their names and numbers and contact info in the chat box. Oh, Kat put in there that this on demand series puts together free training on vendor teams and referrals. There you go. There's more free training. Every time you turn around with these people, Kat and Chad, there's more free training. Not they shouldn't buy stuff, but I will always tell people do the free stuff first. And then you'll get so addicted that you'll you want the you'll buy the training like me. You know, Kat, when they announced they're doing some marketing, I just bought it. I mean, what the hell she was gonna do? And I had some time with her to review my marketing with me. So, but that was after I made a lot of money. I, I reinvested. Glenda Ward said, Glenda Ward, comma D says, excited about role play. Glenda, what do you mean about role play? You want to role play? And I'm fine with that. <laughs> no, you guys had it listed as one of the services or features that are coming soon. So I'm excited about that. It's oh. going to be the next on-demand series. That's the next concept for yeah. the one we're launching next. It's going to be like a Thanksgiving launch. Like I'm paying attention here. I'm supposed to be paying attention. <laughs> Sorry about that. <laughs> he um, was ready okay. to role play though. I'll role play. I'll role play. I do all, you look, I talk all day long to people. So I'm glad to role play. I, I, in particular, I mean, I do talk to petitioners. Usually after they've been referred to me, I don't cold call petitioners today. I do cold call some attorneys and other referral sources. I'm glad if anybody wants to roll that can help out, I'm glad to. Larry, your hand's up. You're next up. How can we help you? Bill, good to have you back. Thank you. Although your replacement wasn't bad. I know. I heard you compliment him. And I felt really bad on the, on the replay. Like, <laughs> come on. But then you gave a compliment to me. That was nice too. So thank you. I <laughs> oh, take okay. it very seriously that yeah. uh, how, how you guys rate me versus Chad is very important to me. Yeah, well, it's very close. Very close. I no no big deal there. Bye. Mm -hmm. So I see that we got. So my question was, I've been studying. I'm going back on on again because I didn't catch all of it the first time. So second time around, I'm looking at estate exec software, which is a, got a heavy emphasis with attorneys. So I'd love to hear your take on it. And I see that we have Brian Wilson on the call. I would love to hear his thoughts on best practices. I'm meeting an attorney tomorrow to kind of present that. Mm -hmm. And I would love just to hear the, you know, the best ideas to get the state of a software, exec software. Presented. Honestly, I, I, mean, I took the earn program. I taught a little module on it. I took the whole program. Loved it, had some great stuff. And, you know, I kind of feel like Chad sold us a, a toolbox of tools. That's one tool I've just not used yet because the other ones are working pretty good for me. So I can't speak to the exec, the state exec software personally. I do work with estate planning attorneys all the time. I just, and I use the training for the program all the time. I just don't use that software. But Brian, if you're on the call, do you want to jump in and share like what you're doing with it and, and what the best practice is? So... Yes. Yeah, so Larry, about the, well, for, first of all, Bill, I went to a financial planning lunch today and it was, I was taking your advice about going to the courthouse. So I went to this financial planning lunch today. There were a hundred CPAs, trust attorneys, all kinds of guys. None of them had ever heard about a service that we, that we offer. They were all blown away. So I have business cards from all of them that <laughs> I got today that they all want to talk with me in the next two weeks. So that's one thing. Courthouses, Bill recommended. I recommend you go to these luncheon with these guys. That you, you, they've, they've never heard of what we do. Anyway, so Larry, I did bring up the fact that I worked with Dan Stickle over at estateexec.com uh, and that it is a free piece of software that we provide we refer to it as a free piece of software. Free. Okay. We to make sure they free. In my, in, in my business, I pay for it. It's, I think it's a hundred dollars or 90 bucks or something like that. Dan froze the price for us as long as we're through this with Chad. So it's 90 bucks for us. I tell them it's free. I tell them I'm happy to set them up on a free trial if they would like. And they go in and take a look at it. And I just type their attorney's name in it and I send it to them. And I send it to them. If they want to use it, I am glad to pay for that fee for the attorney because they're going to give us referrals. But that's what I do, Larry. And I tell them 
that the, or at least what I told, I told today, I just, I just kept saying this, this piece of software will eliminate the administrative drag that you have around capturing everything related to the estate and it will centralize it. It provides transparency and it helps you to better manage your clients. One of the guys asked me, well, do you put, you know, do you put everything? I said, it is not a one size fits all. You don't have to use all of it. You can use one piece of it. If you don't want to have bank records in there, you don't have to put bank records in there. If you have an antique car that you don't want to put in there, as a, you know, for the beneficiaries to see, you don't have to put it in there. So, but it is a tool and it is a piece of software that separates us, I think, from everybody else. Everybody else can go in and say, hey, I'm a real estate agent. I've sold deals in trust before and I can help you. Okay, great. But I don't think anybody else can go in there with this piece of software and say, we have partnered with them. And that's the language that I use, Larry. We have partnered with the state exec. So Brian, like when you, like, let's say you go, like I'm going to an attorney's office tomorrow. So do you have a methodology of like, you know, all I told her is I said, it's a software solution, pretty much what you did that I think it could be a game changer for you. She goes, how about tomorrow? So we're on. So you walk in, how are you going to, to present that? Because if I think there's one thing that's a hole in the process right now is we don't really have a defined way to present that product that seems seamless to me. So Larry, I don't, I don't pretend to be the expert or the developer of the software. Okay. So I don't do that. I just say it is an additional tool that we have that we provide to our clients and it helps to eliminate administrative drag. So that's number one. I don't pretend to be an expert and I've never demoed it live in front of an attorney. Okay. I tell the attorney what it does at a, what I consider to be a 30,000 foot level. I, I don't get down into the weeds of the software. And I tell them, hey, if you are interested in a demo, if you're interested in a free trial, I can set that up for you. But I use it, Larry, just as a piece of the overall puzzle that we can solve a lot of their challenges that currently, you know, they don't want to deal with right now. So let, let me kind of do some background for you, because I think this may help people that are also considering doing the same thing. My second appointment was yesterday, and really, I was there just to get their feedback on the local administrative probate guide, which actually turned out to be far greater than I thought it would be. The, the attorney was very involved in customizing it for our county because she knows the rules better than I do. And she was very interested in getting that right. And we spent about an hour on it. And when I got done, I said, so what if I told you I had a software program that could take all that what we just did and actually put it into a software program, kind of like Quicken, if you will, that has all those fields that we just did all lined up for you to be able to share it and use it however you wish. And she was like, can you come back tomorrow? So now we're on for Wednesday. So I'm like, okay. I mean, I haven't spent a lot of time in it. So I kind of put myself under the gun in a way. So, so Larry, I would tell you the one thing that I did in trying it is I signed up for it. Right. And I believe that Dan gives that to us for free. I don't remember paying for my account as a part of Chad's thing. I think there was some code that we had to put in there in order to get it. And it's in that course, but as part, just to be clarified, as part of the earn program, it was free as a part of the earn program. Thank, yeah. thank you, Bill. Right. But Larry, I put in my house. I went in and I put in my estate. I created, what does my estate look like? I went through, it took me oh. maybe 30 or 45 minutes to create my estate. And what does that look like in the software? What do the reports look like in the software? And I thought that that was extremely- Nice, eating okay. your own dog food. The term there is eating your own dog food. <laughs> That's the software term that they use in, in companies is if you use the product yourself. And if you don't use yourself, then how effectively can you market it versus, so like, like Microsoft, there's a point where they were using Gmail and they had to ban Gmail if you work for Microsoft. So Bill, now that you're done with dog food, I'm going to run back to, I want to talk Sorry. about the details, if you will. Brian, so I sent off an email to Dan Stipple yesterday. Well, and let me do this just, just for the sake of, there are a lot of people on the call 
who've not okay. taken their own program and the people watching. So do you want to okay. just set this up a little bit so they can follow along? Okay, so some of, I'm, I know people are like, what the heck are the guys, guys talking about? That sounds I'm interesting. Sorry. So let me just kind of set up a little bit. So this call is free and you go to probatemastery.com. There's a lot of great free content. But one of the things that Chad, the company does is sells a program called Probate Mastery. And that's designed to help a real estate agent or investor understand the process of marketing to families to get either property listed or property sold as an investor and how to build that into a business. That's called Probate Mastery that Chad does. It's an on-demand course that I think is $4.99. For people graduating the program, there's another program called Earn, Earn Attorney Referrals Now. And that program, I think, was $4.99. It's a separate program. Once you've learned the probate business, how do you get more referrals from attorneys? Within that program, it was all, and that was, I forget how many hours it took me to do the program, but a lot of stuff. And, I, and full disclosure, I taught one of the modules, but I taught less than 10% of the whole thing. One of the modules is this product called Estate Exec. It's a software program that you can get it. You don't have to take the program to do it. But if you take the program, they waive the upfront fee and in the program teach you how to use it. And so Larry, Brian's taken it and run with it and implemented it. And Larry, who took the EARN program is, is asking questions on how to implement more effectively. It's available to you whether or not you go through the EARN program, but if, if you do the EARN program, there'll be some basic teaching on what it means, as well as some discounts that probably will pay the coaching program if you actually use it. Okay, so that's for those who don't know what we're talking about. Hopefully now they know what we're talking about. And we will talk about dog food. Larry, back to your question. <laughs> okay, so circling back, the process would be to register the attorney on a 10-day free trial so the attorney can play with it. At the end of 10 days, they love it. I know they will. So then we'll go ahead and, and I get what you're doing. So I, I do the same thing. I'll step in and pay to license that product for that attorney, correct? Okay. So then what my interest was, was being able to stay in, involved in it. It's free, Mr. Attorney, as long for your, for the new estates that you open or the new probate cases you open, it's free to your clients. So long as you come back through me, I'll create the estate for you. You'll tell me their name and address and some very basic information. I'll create the estate and then I share it back to the attorney and the attorney can then and then we can also share it with the the PR, if you will, the personal representative. That's how I understood it. How about you, Brian? Is that pretty close? So Larry, I'm a big fan of delegation. And once we provide the tool to the PR, I would be more than happy to walk the PR through the setup of tool, but I would not recommend doing it for them. I think if you do it for them, the likelihood of them actually getting their hands into the tool significantly decreases. I got you. Okay. Somebody asked in the chat, Brian, do I pay each PR license with, with EE? The answer is yes, because it's a hundred dollars out of my pocket and the commission for the property is, I mean, it's an exponential return right. on, on the investment. Yeah. yeah. Great. Look, I have no excuse for not. I took the earn program. I've just been busy and traveled and huge holidays it. and all that's done now. I have no more excuse going on. So I made a note to myself to get into the, to sign up for the exec, state exec and get on the ball in this. Cause it's a fantastic tool. I've just so, been really busy. With so, this. so I know, so this is how my brain works. I know eventually some people will get around to thinking like this too. What do you do when there's no real estate involved? Are you still, are you still paying that, that fee as well, Brian? Do you feel like it's just the cost of doing business? So far, I have not run across that. Everything that has been referred to me has had real estate. Number okay. two, I think if it's a multiple, well, I think asking, you know, the question you just asked me, I, th I think yes. I, I think that I would pay for it if it was an attorney that I either had a relationship with or wanted to develop a relationship with. Gotcha. Man, and, okay. and if I spend a hundred bucks and that person doesn't call me back, then you know what? I spent a hundred dollars on Google ads last month and I don't. Yeah. You know, some of those clients didn't call me back either. So I, I just feel like that particular thing is a cost of doing business. Plus, it also helps to support Dan, who is supporting us okay. um, with this software. So, you know, I, I think there's some symbiosis there, and I, I think I would. Yeah. 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 Yeah, so it probably the chance of them being drawn to the estate exec software, if there's no real estate involved, it's a, probably a pretty simple probate and the need for that may not be as great. 
Well, I think that's I think that's an excellent point. Without real estate, you may be dealing with a less complex estate. And I did talk with Dan about this as well. And Dan recommends that if we want to provide them with the license, we can go ahead and do that. And then if they need help, Dan does have a support team if there's anything outside of what we can't help them with. But the basics are, it, it is pretty simple. The way that Dan built the software, it is pretty simple. Someone who was non-technical, I shared it with, and they were able to navigate it just fine. Okay, so your best practice would be, Mr. Attorney, when you have a probate case you want to open and utilize the software, let me contact them and set them up. Is that your once the yes, you're getting so, involved? Yeah, so the attorney, the attorney says, Mr. PR, I'm going to put you in touch with Brian. He runs a business here called Hybrid Estate Solutions. He will help you with everything with your personal property and your real property. And he has a piece of software that will help us all stay connected as we go through the process. Here's Brian's number. I'm going to send an email to you and to Brian connecting all of us. And then I'll let Brian take it from there. Yeah, I, I think that's the better idea. I like that better than coming through the attorney. If any time that we could talk directly to the PR as a part of that solution, it would be interesting to see how many attorneys feel comfortable turning us over at that point or not. What's been your experience? I will tell you, I was surprised. I was surprised last week. I mean, I shared this with you guys last week, but I was surprised at the luncheon today at how many people would just tell me, oh my goodness, I've got something. I'm going to, I'm going to send it to you today. Or this is great. I'm not working on anything right now, but the next time that I do, I'm, I'm calling you. Once you make that initial connection, then it goes back to what Bill and what Chad have been coaching, which is you have to nurture those relationships the same way that you would a potential buyer client, except this relationship with the attorneys is a much more professional, hands-on, face-to-face. -face. That's the business that they deal in, whereas we may drip campaign our buyers to death. I don't have any real plans to set up my attorney referrals on drips. It's going to be much more phone calls or stopping in just to say hello with the, something for the office or whatever. It's all a, a relationship business is what I gathered even from today. And just making a contact with all these people is, is what matters and maintaining that. It becomes a lead magnet for you to start the relationship. At the end of the day, I don't care what they say to you when they talk to you, they're only going to trust their client to you if there's a relationship at some level. And then Kat also reminds us there's a stateprofessional.org, which is a referral network for estate planning. And as real estate agents, you want to get on there and fill out your profile. And the goal there is to create a network for inbound and outbound referrals. So great. Yeah. So the burning question I know that's on everyone's mind is, Brian, how did you get invited to the financial planners luncheon? Because we're, we're all waiting to hear how you did that. It just happened to be this one here locally that popped up. I went as a guest. I had to pay $40 to go as a guest. I signed up online and they said, who's your, who's your sponsor or who's your whomever? And I said, I said, oh, I don't have one. I was, I was interested in joining. And they said, well, we're going to let Mike Balin be your sponsor because he's the current president. And when you get here, we'll just introduce you to Mike and then he can introduce you to the group during lunch. <laughs> so so that's, that's what I did. Yeah. All right, yeah, I have there, that down as a to-do. Yeah, there's, there was a group in, in Southern California. I'm in West Los Angeles. And the group here is in Long Beach, the biggest one. I used to work near Long Beach. And so I went to one once. It was huge. Bunch of attorneys. Now, unfortunately, when I went to, I had a bunch of realtors. And the kind of realtors I really, I don't want to look like them. I don't want to be like them. And they were just too needy and too salesy. And, and so, but the, the networking was fantastic. The quality of people there was amazing. Today, it's just a too bit of a drive for me to go to. And, and the time is not good. But definitely look up in your market area. And there are financial planning organizations, wealth planning organizations, estate planning organizations. There's training, there's coaching, they have events. There's one in San Diego, I think in December that I would normally go to. So I think there's all kinds of opportunities for those. If you look in your area and all, all you have in different areas, I would take a look in your area for those opportunities where you can meet people. But the key there, I think, is there's a process. You want to distinguish yourself. You don't want to be another realtor. You want to be, in Brian's case, the expert on the state exec or some other feature that you're an expert in. And Bill, I, I do want to piggyback on what, you, on, on what you said. You also mentioned however long ago that when you went to the courthouse that you dressed like an attorney. 100%. So, I mean, you guys see me every week. I have, I have golf shirt and golf pants. That's 
that's my normal attire. But I put on a suit and a tie and went to this lunch and they didn't, in, you know, they didn't introduce me. He said, he said, well, how do you want me to introduce you? And I said, I want you to introduce me as the president of hybrid estate solutions. Beautiful. And I have a CPE on my little name tag that they gave me. And everybody was like, what's, well, what's CPE? What's C, what's CP? And I said, yeah. I'm a certified probate expert. That little name tag, every one of them had their own little designations like on their name tag. Yeah. So in that little world, that little name tag designation, that meant something. It's big to attorneys. And designations are really big to attorneys and to accountants because they live and die in those, I should say in California, and maybe other states too, but in California, you can't be a trust and estate attorney. Like you take special courses only through the bar and then on your profile on the bar, it will show that you have that certification. Unlike realtors, where we take third party classes, like a Chad CPE is a third party program. But for attorneys, it's usually through the state bar. And those designations are important for referrals. And attorneys will only refer to other attorneys that have those designations. So when you have that, they're definitely interested. That's good stuff, Brian. Yeah. And the suit, and I, I would just say to guys, you want to dress like an attorney, you want to dress like the high priced attorney. The best example for that is a TV show, Suits. Those are the highest priced attorneys in the world. They're merger and acquisition attorneys. Dark suits. They wear Briani. I would say it doesn't matter. Look, you can get a cheap suit, dark, white shirt, silk tie. That's the look for men. Women, whatever the equivalent is for that. And I always used to carry a bag on rollers because they're so important. They have papers in their briefcase. I would just have my lunch and my wallet and maybe a coffee mug or something in there. But good stuff. Bill, I did have one other question. So we're talking about attorneys. So I did, you know, I was on a roll. So I went ahead and called the, the county bar association find out about affiliate memberships. I needed to get that done. It turns out they don't have an affiliate membership. And I was a little surprised. So I told them I was surprised. And they said, well, we do have events where you could help sponsor. Would you be interested in that? There you go. And I said, perfect. And they go, well, tell me about what, what's your interest with attorneys. So it opened that discussion about what I'm doing with uh, probate and estate planners and all that stuff. And then they were just like, oh, well, that would be great. So can we put you on the list to contact you? So even though it's not in my county, I may join another county, their bar association, but at least that's a way that you could get involved on your own local if they don't allow affiliate memberships. And if they don't have affiliate membership in your county, look at the state. You're in Texas, right? So oh, yeah, maybe that's right. You're in Tarrant County, but in the state of Texas, they, they're not okay. affiliate. And then also, I know people who do continuing ed. I have a, a friend who's a title rep who got certified with the Bar Association of California to offer continuing ed classes on probate. So he actually teaches attorneys and built his business. And that's another option in, in certain states and areas. Great question. Great. Okay. I'll have some more questions next week. So Brian, do <laughs> make sure you're here because I'm going to ask Bill and Bill's going to go. I don't, I don't know. know. Is Brian No, by here? next week, I'm going to know. No, by next week, you can ask me whatever you want. I will say also, and you know, thank you, Brian. And I will also add you guys a great resource online, the Facebook group is a probate master alumni group where you can ask questions there. And I've seen many people on this call uh, there to answer questions as well as Kat and Chad, so feel free. And then Lynette dropped in information on a possible source for timeshares. And Khalid's going to a state planning workshop tomorrow. There you go. There's all kinds of them. Different areas have different programs. There's not like as like like organized as you might think for estate planning or fiduciaries, but there's in any major metro city, there's definitely people who are looking to get together in those areas. Brian looks like he has some questions in the chat box. What's your elevator pitch to these professionals? It's very okay. simple. We have a we have a business that helps people going through the probate process to do the things that they either don't want to do or don't know how to do. That's it. There you go. And then what the event you went to was a, a state planning workshop or state planning association or what was the group you went to? It was a financial estate planning council membership meeting. It was on real estate succession planning. There you go. That sounds perfect. I went to one once they had, the topic was on a particular thing in probate in California is called a, oh, I'm drawing a blank on it, where uh, you don't put property in the state, in the trust you meant to, and you can do it afterwards. It's a, a particular- Hex said Bill? Hex said petition, yeah. yeah. And so there was one of the legal trees did it on Hex said, and he gave copies of documents and the history behind it. It was an amazing luncheon. They learned all that at the luncheon there. So go there to learn the content as well as to network. I think that's important. Um, and then Cap put, there she is on the spot, put down uh, more of what Brian says, his quotes and the scripts and such. A lot of thanks, Kat. I don't say thanks, Bill. I say a lot of thanks, Kat. They're just, I'm just saying, I'm not, you know, needy or anything, but feel free to, I'm just noticing that. Okay, Stephen, what's up with you? How can we help? Hey, 
I've been getting invited a lot to these luncheons with different senior communities. Or oh, other, yeah, 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 I saw that. You know, and some of that's like kind of B&I like, and I, basically I was going to ask if it was worth my time, but having listened to what you guys were just talking about, gosh, if I could get into like luncheon with attorneys or estate planners, that sort of thing, that probably sounds more beneficial than being around a bunch of loosely affiliated professionals. The, the problem I have with some of these senior community luncheons is like, oh, we already have a couple of realtors. But these right. people don't have any designation. Like I look them up in MLS, they may right. be small house the past year. I mean, it's just that kind of thing. I actually interviewed, there's a company called Mom's House. I actually interviewed the no. founder on my, on my YouTube channel. Somebody's saying no. I, I am Bill, but I'll, after you make your comment, I will chime in. Sorry. I went to oh, the thing. Okay. okay. So what I'd say is there's a whole approach of those people who sell senior living. And mm -hmm. I met another real estate agent who that's, she got a couple of probate listings and I said, well, how'd you get them? And she said, well, my best friend is a sales rep for the senior living facility. I said, don't tell me more about it. Well, they're a regional company and they have like 40 properties nationwide. They have seven properties in the area. How many reps like there are, like her are there? It was like 13 reps. I said, well, she's your best friend and she gave you two probates this year. Why aren't the other 13 reps your best friend? Like, what are you doing to market them if you enjoy that business? And so I'd say to you, Stephen, is that's a whole channel. There's a whole channel there called senior living people. What I would say is that for some people, if you enjoy working in that space and meeting those people, being invited to a senior housing event, you're really going, going there to meet the salesperson for that event. You're not going to meet the attendees. Right. Because you know I, that. And then, yeah. then the question I ask is what value are you going to bring to them to mm -hmm. help them? One would be to help them market the event. You know, I'm a real estate agent. I'm an expert in marketing. Maybe I can help you get better attendance. I can follow up with the clients. We can work together on some marketing if I was in that space. Yeah. So again, the, the question I always ask is what can you do for them that were in the business? Dave, I know you had some, you, you had some comment you went down on that. I went to the uh, three-day event in there. St. Louis? No, St. Louis. Nothing bad about their company or what they're doing. Okay, let's just say that. They're ramping up. Mm -hmm. And they're charging a lot of money to be in the ramp up process to give you leads for this. And everything that we're doing and what you're teaching here, Bill and Chad's teaching, they're telling you to, to not do it really. All the work of networking, all the stuff that they want you to network with the nurses or the, the placement agents, and they want you to be in their network to do it. So nothing bad about the company at all, regardless if this is public video, but I think everything that you could do with regards to building your business with probate, with 55 plus community, with the financial planners, with the attorneys, but also include a couple of those reps and go visit some of those housing so you could start being in that world. But I don't know if I'd go all in on it. Well, I, I already do. I have a 25 rotation I go through. You know, I, I go once a week, just Thursday afternoons, and I meet wow. reps at these uh, assisted living, skilled nursing, and independent living memory care. And there is a need, like a lot of them have some real vacancy problems because in the aftermath of COVID, so I'm getting more calls from it. The thing that's coming up is there's some affiliated people. I won't work with placement agencies anymore. I've had too many bad experiences with these placement franchises, but the sales reps are really just mm. always inviting me to come to these luncheons and some of these other people. It's like, well, I mean, I can go just to save face, but I don't know if it's an effective use of my time. I think that's really the question I'm asking. I yeah, think it, the answer might be for you going once to any of them might be, if they do it monthly, maybe that's where you pick up a junior agent or a buyer's agent and, and go to build those relationships. That's how I looked at it. And it's different in every state. It's different in every area, different in every market I mean, competition. And it's different on what you want to do, how you want to approach these people. Mm -hmm. You have to find your right, right plan. But and Bill, and what we're trying to do, if you really think about it, we're trying to get us our freedom back, our time back, right? You know, I want to spend more time with my boys and my wife now than I do want to do doing all this real estate stuff. I really do. And when you build a business where you have to go visit something or go network with somebody, you're committing to at least once a week, once a month, twice a week, whatever. If you don't have capital, you have money coming in. You're going to have to prospect that business and get to know people, but try to figure out how you could build this business off the capital. If I spend 20 grand, how am I going to make $200,000 a year? You know, that's the conversation we really have to have. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, I get so frustrated and I spent the first part of my career not doing that. I could do more damage in a day sending this mail out than I do go into a network meeting, you know? And I also think the way to look at it is there's people you're meeting and there's relationships you're 
keeping. So I was looking at how many people do I meet that I want to have a relationship with. If I go to a meeting, a certain amount of time, I expect you know, a certain number of people per hour that I meet new potential referral sources. Going back to the same place is just maintain the relationship. Well, if they're giving you business, what a nice way to do that. You have to take them out to lunch. They're already at the network. Maybe you buy them lunch at the network or whatever. We need to think of it strategically and watch the numbers. What, how many people you're meeting? And then if you're getting referrals from them, how many relationships you're actually keeping? And take a business approach to it. And that I think that the answer is probably more there if you start tracking your numbers. Sure. Does that help a bit? Yeah, that makes sense. Great. Let's continue. Come back and let us know. I'll continue, Stephen. Okay? Fantastic. Good. Jessica, hand up. And you're next. And I think it'll be the last question for the day here. So let's get you hey, muted. Bill, and um, you're kind of in my area. I We have a team that we work in Los Angeles. Riverside and San Bernardino. I wanted to see, and I know it, it's an issue across the nation. The market has changed. It's not changing, but with properties, how are you convincing, not convincing, but what is the conversation you're having with your sellers or the estates, the PRs that you're not going to get top dollar anymore. We're not seeing the crazy multiple offers. The, the market has shipped. My team, we have, I think it's 12 listings right now. Majority of them are pocket. They're tear down. <laughs> I mean, it's almost plan value on some of them. And some of the estate, the PRs are just thinking that they're still going to get these crazy numbers because of the last two years. Well, look, managing the seller's expectation of the market is really one of the key skills in this business. And I don't tend to be all that in that area. You know, I look back and I see the business I lost in the last year that I didn't get because somebody else, I think in most cases, lied to my customer or prospect to get the listing. And then eventually the market is the market. You know, one thing I've learned is the market's the market. The property's worth what it's worth and they're not going to get any more than that. If you do your job marketing it properly, sometimes they don't get marketed properly. Sometimes in probate, realtors feel like they've earned the listing and the right not to market a property properly, but to double end it or to buy it themselves. I don't, I'm not one of those. My job is to market and sell the house. So on the flip side, I will say, unlike my initial training with Mike Ferry, which was take every listing at a price that will cause it to sell or don't take it, I'm fine with saying to them, hey, look, it's, I, I did this recently. Hey, the property is worth $2.3 million. If you want to list at three six, fine. But I'm going to give you statistics, and every month we need to evaluate it. If you have to sell the property, you have to adjust the price. It's not me. It's the market. And I, and I have an email that documents all this. So you don't come back to me. 90 days later, I said, well, you'd sell it at 3.6. No, I didn't. I told you I would never sell for that. And then you have to do your job every week, give them an update, how many you know inquiries, offers, views, various online. You have to have that as part of your mechanics. And at some point, if, they, if they're motivated, they'll adjust the price. They're not, if they don't adjust the price, it means probably they're not motivated. Not much you can do about that. So I had a listing last year that expired because the seller wasn't motivated. She didn't have to sell. And some guy called her up, oh, I have this magic formula with hard to sell properties. And he listed it at what well, we had it listed that they didn't sell. We had an offer at a lower, much lower price. And here was a year later and he sold it for the same price I had an offer on that she turned down a year before. So you know that he'd do as well. And I had it was limited authority, which means they had a court confirmation. Since then, a person had, had passed and he was, and she was, it was a conservatorship and he passed in the trust. My point is, this guy didn't do anything but sold the property for the same price I had a year before under difficult circumstances. He lied to her. But bad on me for not being more effective at explaining to my customer what the options were and staying in touch with her afterwards to not get the listing again. So I think you have to look at it as you're responsible for communicating with your sellers effectively. And if they're not getting it, what can you do to help better explain things to your customers? There's no other question to ask. It's not them. It's not the market. It's our business. And so I don't have any magic for them other than I work at that all the time. Sending them data, the numbers, and but I will take listings overpriced because I have a game plan. I'm going to tell them we're going to review it and adjust it if you want to sell it. And if you don't want to sell it, that's fine. I can't make somebody sell something they don't want to sell and go get another listing with somebody who has to sell. I love people who have to sell property. I don't really like listing for people who don't have to sell. Yeah, we do a lot of notice of defaults, the, the reverse mortgages mm -hmm. probates. So I have, I don't know, I think six of them right now that are NODs. So those, they have a little more motivation. The they others, do and they don't. Yeah. I think they do and they don't. And that's the challenge is when people go up to distressed properties, we assume they want to sell, but they really don't want to sell. That's why they're distressed. They, they'd rather prolong it forever if they could. And, no, these are NODs from reverse and the, right. like the PRs are out of state. It's We kind of follow the same formula as David. We work with out of state first and then local. Okay, PR. but I'm saying there are, maybe not your case, but just for everybody else listening, there are people who are facing foreclosure 
who you go, well, you have to sell, you lose your equity. And they're all, well, I just don't want to make, I don't want to do anything. I don't want to sell. I don't want to pay because they can live there for free and they don't have to make a decision that day. And so for some of us, sometimes we, we assume because somebody's in distress, we know logically they should sell. It doesn't mean they want to sell. We have to somehow educate them so they understand what their options are. And, and if they don't, that's on us that we're not being effective in explaining it in the way they get it. So, you know, Jessica, to be continued. Bill, I got a question for you. Yes. I love your schedule and what you've done with the YouTube stuff. So can you explain what your goal and every day I'm seeing you post something. That's really the activity that you're doing, the schedule that you're keeping. Is that how are you managing that with your business and try to give me the, it's, it's crazy. It's nice. So I'm a student of Gary V, Gary Vaynerchuk. And I heard him say recently that you have to smother people with content today to get attention. Like the books you read a year ago are no longer valid whether it be COVID or the business game more competitive or whatever, I have in mind to do as much as I can. I have my own live stream on Thursday, probateweekly.com. You're all welcome to join. I live stream, I get about 80 agents on that. I usually do an interview. And then I have a VA who cuts that into pieces. We post that. So it goes live, then it goes streamed, then it goes cut into pieces. And then I interview people during the week. And, and anytime I have any prospect, I'll interview them and put that video online and try to, my VA will cut that into pieces. And then when I just am motivated to do something, I'll just do a video and post that. And so I looked, I realized I was posting 15 videos in a week, if you really go to my YouTube channel, but it's giving me great lift. It's giving me great you know, attention and great yep. credibility with prospects. But I, I can't say I've been scientific about it. I'm not as young as I used to be, so I don't have the energy. I'm not gonna work the hours that I used to work. So within the time I do work, I wanna be productive and efficient. And I focus on, as I was saying to Steven just a few minutes ago, how many people I talk to, how many people watch what I see in video, per hour and that's the key metric that we really follow that's the one thing that drives me kind of nutty about all the networking you can do in person and the things that you could do by having a good crm and just putting the people in there that you talk to and you right. keep the relationship going right well um, so i look at this i look at the networking as new for me it's all new contact so i go to one event a month that's 10 minutes from my house there's 250 people in the room and i average come back with about 10 business cards people that i want to add to my crm and I just scan them to my VA and she puts them in my CRM and nice. I send them an email. But if I get 10 in a, it's about three or four hour time commitment to go. Now I'll see another 50 people, 100, that's nurturing those relationships. But I really track the, the number of new relationships. Otherwise I'm not gonna go to an event because it's just not worth my time. So to go to a financial planning event to meet one or two people, by the time I get dressed, drive there, park, I'm there for an hour or two, drive back, it's a three or four hour commitment. You know, I can't normally get the number of, don't add up for me to justify the business. I'm glad you got dressed for this call. Yeah, <laughs> for you, David, <laughs> that is for you. Okay, guys, we're over time. I'm sorry we went a little long, but I think we had a really good discussion today. Hopefully you guys enjoyed it. I know I did. Again, I'm a practitioner and I want to be honest with you. I do this call because I, I need it. I learned from it. I learned a lot today myself on the estate exec. I'm going to commit to you guys that I'm going to be on a state exec and next week be able to answer some questions. So Larry and David in particular, or Larry and Brian in particular, thank you for your help. And as well, Jessica and the other people with great questions. Thank you guys. We do this every thir every Tuesday, noon Pacific, 3 p.m. Eastern. It's also on probatemastery.com. This is the Probate Mastery Alumni Call. We do it every week and record it. I'm Bill Gross. If you have questions, go into the Facebook group, ask questions there. Thank you guys and have a great week. Hey, Bill, real Thank quick, you. can I get everybody, since I am working on my profile in the estate, professionals.org, will y'all please go endorse me, please? I'm going to try to be the first one to 100 endorsements. Okay, no, I won't. I want, oh. I want, to, I want more endorsements than you. Thank you, guys. Okay, bye.